Hello and welcome to some Xfinity racing here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It is modern Charlotte and it is some unofficial week 13 racing, but we're here to, uh, oh, hey, Spencer's in here. We're here to uh, <laughs> investigate some oval refresh. Um, so I think this will be a great indicator whether this uh, oval refresh is making a big difference or not. I think uh, this is a great track where you could potentially move up or move down a lane. Push now. We have two laps to set a decent time. Depending on uh, how the track heats up, which is what it's supposed to do more of now. Uh, I did notice I, I jumped into the open practice a little late. A lot of people had run a lot of laps. And I found out that either A, I'm much slower than I thought I was going to be, or B, uh, because the track had a lot of people running on it, the fast laps were set early, and so the track had slowed down. So, either option could be true, <laughs> but um, it could be evidence that uh, it matters. It matters if you're running on the track. and uh, how much grip it has. We're going to do our qualifying here. Didn't get too much practice, kind of like I said, but interesting, the track feels much tight, much tighter than it did when I was running. One more lap. interesting. I think I want to go lower. When I was doing practice before, it felt like I was kind of doing better with uh, a higher line, but it didn't feel too great there, so we'll try and move down on the track then. It only looks like you want to be lower in turns 3 and 4 at least, almost at the wall. This has always been a not a great combo for me too, so that might also be why uh, I'm slow, is because I'm slow. Occam's razor here. Maybe that's kind of just the true answer. I'm not fast because I'm not fast. But hey, that P4 time's not so bad. We're only about a tenth off the leader right now, so hey, second lap kind of worked out. I think if I had taken low line in three and four the first lap, maybe things would have been okay. Maybe low line both ends of the track, but we'll take that. I know a lot of people aren't qualifying either. Uh, good luck to Spencer. Another thing is, look how freaking huge this field is. How many people is that? 34? 36. It's like a full Xfinity car field. We've got NIS Xfinity Edition here going on. So that's kind of cool. I don't think there's cautions either. So hopefully we can avoid any mess. That qualifying lap ended up not being so bad. I mean, we're fourth of 19 people that qualified. So, hey, I will take that. But more than anything here, I hope that we can keep it clean and keep driving long enough to start seeing if the track starts changing for us. And whether we can say uh, Oval Refresh is a success or not, but uh, even if not, even if it's either really subtle or hardly noticeable at all, it's important to remind everybody that uh, this is just step one of the Oval Refresh. Uh, they're kind of changing the like track temps as people run on them and everything, but they've got more planned for future updates. Um, in the uh, effort to refresh oval. So we'll see uh, what the future brings there. And uh, I've heard people say like the the difference they've experienced is not like earth shattering, but it, uh, it is noticeable. And that makes sense. Uh, I heard people saying like they were at Texas and you could move up a little bit on the track, but the fastest line and the best place to run was still the bottom. But that makes sense because it's Texas and it's a one lane track. As much as I like Texas, I admit it is definitely a one lane track. So if anything, that sounds like a positive to me because we're not swinging too hard the other direction. Like we shouldn't be running the high line at, I don't know, Martinsville or something. <laughs> um, so if, uh, if the difference is big enough that a place here like Charlotte, we can get away with running a little higher up the track maybe um, as a bunch of people drive the bottom line, then uh, we can kind of start moving up and down the track 
then that's a good thing. That's the end of the session, P4. And uh, what's something we want to see, so... P4, we're going to be uh, on that high line. We'll see if... Um, I don't know, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people running up a little higher anyway, so maybe that part of the track will heat up regardless. And so we're just going to end up with everywhere on the track heated up. <laughs> so maybe it won't make a big difference no matter what, but... Oops. One lap to green. Line up on the outside. Pit road is closed right now. <laughs> the estimated SOS oh, is... Oh, fixed setup shot. 4, in every race. <laughs> <laughs> we expect to be fighting for the podium. Boy, I gotta buy some of those setups. We get this dumb sideways start, unfortunately, here at Charlotte. Hopefully, everybody is able to line up in time with this 36 car field. Pretty strong, too. 4.1k out here. No idea where I would be if uh, this were our car number were numbered by. I rating. But according to this, if I finished fourth in this field, I would get 53 I rating, which is pretty good for me. I mean, I I can win races in smaller strength of fields and not get nearly that much. So it must be uh, pretty competitive out here. Looking at race lab, which you can't see, sorry. But uh, looking at my race lab, everybody around me is in the 5000s in I rating. So strong field. It'll give us the precise strength of field number here in a second. But it's in the 4100 range. 4136, that's my guess. 36 is just a number I pulled out of my uh, hat. I can't imagine where I might have gotten that from. 50 laps with no cautions, so we definitely are going to want to save tires that's for sure charlotte's a place you want to save tires for sure as well so we're going to go much easier than we did during qualifying which is a no duh thing but much much easier We've got session last lap ready to see if we can compare our laps, and that would be a good way to compare laps later in the race, too, see if we can go up a lane and if it's going to suddenly be faster, but I don't know. That might not be too unusual anyway. That's why it's going to be hard to tell, I think, if the oval refresh is doing anything. Because, I mean, you already could run a little bit faster at some places like Charlotte if you took the higher line in the right circumstance and really got the runoff, but it would kill the tires. So the question is, is it going to kill the That's tires? Where I can just like max save for 20 laps and then be a second lap faster if I still do that. No idea how the tires are going to wear either. Lots of unknowns here, as the uh, physics and such have uh, been adjusted a little bit, but that's why we're here, to learn and hopefully have a fun race. It's cool seeing numbers that aren't just About to go green. Stay 28 or below, like we normally get to. Got the 84 starting us off. Here we go. Gary's in. Green flag, green flag. It's going through one. Car inside. Still there, hold your line. Clear. Car inside. Still there. Clear. You're not running water. And he cuts us off there a little bit, but that's okay. Always sideways. Gonna go real easy, especially through three and four. I think you can really kill your tires through there. Wrecking on the front stretch? I don't see it, but thank you for letting me know. I think that's a new call. I don't remember hearing that call before. Wrecking on the front stretch. <laughs> Must have happened behind us if it really did happen. Gentle with the throttle pedal. We'll let the guy behind go by if he wants to. I'm in no hurry. 
He seems like he's ready to go into the corner faster than I do. Wrecking in turn two. Alright, that is definitely a new call. That's interesting. I think that's very helpful. It's good to know if they're wrecking somewhere in the field, especially at a, a caution-free race, I guess. He's definitely going to pay off. Saving these tires. I think these guys are probably going a little bit hard. Harder than I want to go, for sure. Appreciate them not running me over, either. They're going around, which... Some guys don't like to do. Sometimes they prefer to just pretend you're not there. So, so far we're, we've been okay. Definitely going more of a tire uh, saving approach, so. Not even trying to hold on or anything to these spots. Just letting them get around us. So it's always a place you want to save your tires. That's been my experience in just about every car, and the Xfinity car especially is one that really uh, pays off to have better handling later in a while. So that's why I'm going so hard with tire saving, even if we're losing some position now. I'm hoping it will pay off. Besides, it'll be fun. We'll lose some spots, but maybe we could pass them later. Do some overtaking, that would be fun. And why else would you be in an unofficial race, other than to have some fun and learn some things? Down to 10th. The 98 maybe got the wall. Saw some smoke and then suddenly he was higher up the track. Unless he's just trying that higher line, see if it's working yet. Looks like he got a pretty good run. Car ahead is it's definitely getting tighter. I know the fixed B sets are usually really tight um, most of the time. I don't run fixed very often anymore. That was always my experience. They commonly get called plow boxes, and I think that's for good reason. I've gotten used to the open setups, which are usually much more, you know, willing to turn. As long as you don't overdrive it. Wow, I entered a little hard there, even though I was trying to enter gentle. That's a 2x2 two two up ahead. Trying to get pretty close to that blue line. I think there's some good rotation down there. Almost pushed up and got the wall. It's really wanting to be tight, that's for sure. So very early, only 10 laps into a 50 lap event. You've just done a 52.2. And I could be wrong, but I do think it is caution free. I don't think we have cautions. Oh, guy head gets the wall. We gotta take it. Outside. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Stay low. Still there. Didn't want to push up into him. Clear outside if you want it. That was pretty uh, easy on it. In the corner. Ooh, more wall hits up ahead, it looked like.
Very competitive field. There's not much room between us. Got the guy on the outside now. Outside, clear. Outside. See, he's still entering much harder than we are. Outside, clear. Car outside. And again, it's not helping for us to have to enter so shallow. Okay. Okay. We're up top three wide. That's just what I wanted to hear. Single file. We'll get around him on the outside here through the exit. Survive that little interaction. Just kind of lifted off and waited to see where they were going to end up as they were bouncing off of each other. They both got tied, it looked like, and the guy on top got into the wall, got below him, came up and got him. Seems like everybody's dealing with some serious plow box out of two, so. I try to avoid being one of those guys. Whoa. And maybe higher later. We'll see. They like we definitely got some speed compared to some guys, though. Not gonna go low here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make that pass. So that'll just be a waste. I think he might be letting us go, though. Car outside. Wow, Stay it's such low. a plow box. <laughs> I wasn't even wanting to go low there. There's no turn on the bottom end. I think if I want to make a pass, I'm going to have to do it on the high side. One looked like you got real tight up there, trying to run higher. I think if I think the high line's gonna be more viable in one and two than it will be anywhere else. Let's see if this middle lane's got anything. Yeah, maybe. The question is though, are we gonna kill our tires doing that? Okay. That's a good question. Back in the 51, that was three. What's going on up here? A whole lot of speed, maybe. Scoozy. I'm coming through. We gotta do a slide job here a little bit. Uh, we're not gonna be able to get that pass. Started driving in harder, but I noticed he was gonna still drive in hard, so. Alright, finally get clear of them. I could have forced that a little bit more, but I didn't want to kill my tires anymore, because there's still a long way to go. We're not even halfway. So, tried to pick up the pace a little bit to get that done, but at the same time without ruining all the work I've done so far to try to have a good long run here. So, the nine's behind us. He got around the guy behind. be trying this middle lane. I'm, just, I'm not going to bother with the, the higher line in 3 and 4. I don't think that's going to be viable. It just feels like it gets way too tight up there. But maybe, maybe we'll have to do it because it's getting pretty tight down low too. I like that cut down. It gives us a really good run through there. Alright, we're supposed to be testing level refresh, so we'll try up high. Okay. I see you. We get the run off. 
Is it going to kill the tires, though? Probably. Car inside. Yeah, clear inside. <laughs> Pretty good too, kind of entering the middle and then letting it cut down to the bottom. Not quite the runoff, but some decent speed. Try right, this again. I feel like there's more grip up there. I do. It feels grippy. Can we run the high line now? Is this a thing? Am I killing my tires? We're definitely catching up to these guys ahead. So that felt. They uh, slowed it down even more than usual. That was a 33.2. Gotta make sure I go high enough okay, to get above where the track distance, might have heated up. Cut down, see what we got. Turn three, they're wrecking. I like that call. I like knowing uh, what's going on around on the field, even in caution-free races like this. Okay, wasn't expecting them all to take the high line there. Cut down. Getting flowy. Had to lift off more, so not a good corner. I thought they were going to take the low line, so. This is pretty fun. I'm having a good time. My wife's having a good time too. Unboxing something, I think. <laughs> so, try high line, middle line, cut down here. Ooh, I actually got a little bit looser mid-late corner. That was a new feeling I just got. He's cutting down low, so we're going to stay up high. I think we can get a run here. Cutting right in front of us, so it's pretty aggressive. We're not going to be able to clear him before turn one. But we will clear him in turn one. <laughs> or turn two, I guess it was. They're three wide ahead, so I'm going to run high line. See if I can cut down at all. No, no, no cut down if the guys go there. What are we gonna do here? High line. Pass it up, hope it sticks. He's not gonna. Is this a lap car? Are you serious? Oh well, I guess if it's an official race. I understand. It's kind of fun. He nearly wrecked me though. Cutting it so close on the exit of the corner. Loose there. Car outside. Keep 
Road. Clear high, outside. Keep low. Go low, outside is clear. That says clear. I'm going to leave the guy behind the lane though, even though he didn't do that for me. Car outside. Still there. Still there. Stay low. There's a car on the high side. Got to give him no space at all. Still there. Hold your line. Close racing. He's doing what he's got to do. Still just cannot clear him. Keep low. Gonna get him on exit. Clear. He got tight up in that higher lane, I think. It's plowing really bad up here. I hate to say, but I feel like we killed our tires running higher, which is what I was hoping we wouldn't do. Cutting down. Oh, wiggling on the exit. Got some tire spin type deal going on. Use some space. That explains why that guy was so fast. He was a lap car, presumably with fresher tires. Feels like the bottom's working better in 1 and 2 now, almost like everybody started moving up and so the bottom lane came back in. Again, this all could be confirmation bias, I'm just attributing everything to the oval refresh working, but... Just reporting what I'm feeling and what might be the cause of the feelings. Uh-oh, something's happening. I guess we're good. Big puff of smoke, though. Into 14 to go. Got a guy really coming up fast behind. Really running into us. Whoa, that guy had the 23 sliding through the corner. Big moves going on. What a race this has been. Really got to slow it down into three, feels like. Whoa, nice. Eye racing's getting glitchy for a second. Was dropping some frames and kind of making glitchy noises. I don't like that. I did not expect to get his inside and it ruined my exit. Ahead, maybe going for the pass. Not quite there. Maybe he is. Okay, he's going for it. P7 right now. That's pretty great. Uh oh, Spencer's had trouble. He's back out there behind us. That stinks. I don't know if I've ever been in a race where he hasn't been caught in somebody else's mess. <laughs> and I've been in a lot of races with him. He's got some of the worst luck, man. 
that is 11 to go. Slowing it down a whole lot in 1 and 2 now. I might have to go try up uh, another lane, move up a lane again in 1 and 2, because it's starting to feel like it's losing grip down low. Alright. 51 had a tough corner, it looks like. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad, let go low. I'll uh, let you go. Got 10 left to go. Going up a lane here. Come on, stick. It's not sticking. Into the wall. Behind the weight. I thought for sure he was going to go for it there. I got no turn on this thing whatsoever. Still there. Clear up top. Go real high. Put down. Right behind touches the wall. I'm watching me too much. Let's see what higher line three and four does now. Well, it's uh, much better for the guy behind apparently because he got to our bumper, but. Man, this thing does not want to turn. Car inside. Still there. Got a lap the car inside. coming by with better tires. Still there. Hold Man, on. he's getting wrecked. So somebody's just inside. plowing inside. through. Go high to the car on the low side. Still inside. Still inside. Clear inside. Car outside. We've got someone going to our Stay outside. Low. There's a car on the high side. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Ooh, it's tight right there. Stay low. Clear up top. Outside. You're on the bottom. Three wide. Alright, left outside, car making it three wide. wide. Outside, clear. That somehow works. Five. Five to go. These things are looking good. They're looking good in P9, right, I guess. Spencer's behind us now. He's letting guys go though. Come on, Colter. Push, push, push. We can catch this car. 96 is coming up. It looks like he's saved tires maybe the whole race. He's looking really fast. I'm just going to run into us. Alright. Still there. Knew that was coming. Still there. Hold your line. Clear. Looks like people have done it to him, perhaps. So I don't know if me running higher up the track is what killed my tires, or me just not being very good killed my tires. But it has felt like at certain points in the race, running higher up the track was the way to go. More guys destroying the wall, man. I got my brake bias all the way at 57. I kind of wish it was even lower, to be honest. 
Just Two to get this to thing go. to turn. To go. Two laps left. Let's see what we got up here. Inside. Keep high. Clear. Yeah, was going to do a cut down. But I think Spencer maybe thought I was letting him go. That's all right. I don't think we were catching Captain the guys ahead Russell anyway. Front is now the right front's got to be at like two percent right now. This is ridiculous. No idea why they set these things up so tight. White flag. One more to go. But it's pretty absurd how little this thing's turning. They're three wide up there. Oh, nearly wrecking. Low here and finish it off with a top 10. I'll take it. Well, it felt like the old refresh did something. But, uh, that, uh, nice run. Solid work. Race good, Quinn. Good race, good win. There we go. Please don't run into the back of me when we're done. It was an accident. All right, 2538. That's kind of what I'm expecting my tires to look like. And I kind of wish this was official now. <laughs> 852. That is pretty bad. So, I kind of... It stinks because I feel like I w wish I had not gone up the track at all this race. Even though I was trying to test the oval refresh and everything, I feel like if I stayed low the whole time, it would have protected the right front better or maybe i'm just overdriving it when i go up high and maybe if i didn't overdrive it so hard huh no idea but yeah <laughs> 947 that is pretty much what mine was looking like So we'll look at the crashes and the contacts. But according to uh, Race Lab, I would have gained for this top 10 finish because the field's so strong, so that's cool. No idea why the 67 is turning down into the 54 so much. I mean, that was a net code hit, but obviously the 67's trying to hit him. And then overdriving the corner. Who knows, maybe they're friends or something, but there there he goes, the 54. And then they're gonna crash. No? Alright, they keep it going the right direction. Oh boy, they are really bouncing off each other. The two is too low, but it looked like the 57, or that's a 67, flying up the track and was gonna come up into his lane anyway. So neither of them really given the room. And it sounded like he gassed it up so he could run into the back of him there. Maybe not, but kind of sounded like the throttle was going up, and so then we get this huge wreck into turn one. 67 not holding his brakes or anything. Maybe he was. And uh, they just weren't strong enough, but... That sucks. A lot of guys caught in that. Pretty big wreck. Guys with broken cars trying to make it to the pits. Just some blinking there. Man, this is only lap four. I don't know if we're going to get too much other than wall hits, because I have the feeling we're going to have a ton of wall hits with how tight this thing is. So we'll skip ahead a little bit faster, see if we can't find any uh, guys there, driving close to one another. There's me watching the yellow car get in the wall. Seven does not make it to pit road.
Yeah, I don't know if uh, we're going to be able to see too much. Oh yeah, there was this situation here. What was this about? Oh right, this is when they bounced off of each other. <laughs> yeah, I think they were both, I think the 70 was heading for the 4 and the 4 was heading for the wall simultaneously. Except for us, we can take that higher line. Get around them both. That's just my number one concern with uh, the oval refresh. Like, maybe that higher line's even better, but it's still gonna kill you right front, potentially. More testing's needed, of course. Can't make definitive determinations based on one race. But we certainly killed the right front in this one. 14 does not lift for the 6. And 3 going to get tight. No, the 51 is going to get the wall. Okay, moving along. More wall hits. 15 in the wall on a straightaway. Get the Xfinity wiggles. Ooh, 23 almost hooks himself on the 51. Steam's getting loose out of the exit. I kind of had a couple of those feelings, but that's a hard hit right there. Thankfully, I think that was a one-car accident. I think what I'll do here in a minute is find the leader and then do a quick, super fast forward of the race and see what lines he was running to see if it worked for him to change lanes or if the whole race he was running the bottom and I feel like that's gonna tell us a lot about what uh, the tire wear is gonna look like with the oval refresh at least for this combo because clearly we have a very very tight setup so us racing the 84 Nothing actually to see there. Come on, exit. I think tires are starting to just get worn, so I might just have to uh, call it here. I don't think we're going to see too much else. It likes to show whenever the tires reach about like 50% or worse. And so you'll get a lot of these nothings. So... All right, we're going to just go ahead and find uh, the winner of the race, the 12. And uh, to finish this thing off here, before we look at the race results, we'll see where he ran on the track. So we got 16 times speed right now. So far off the start on the bottom, not too surprising. Track isn't uh, changing temps or anything yet. Going a lane higher to get the pass done. And then kind of doing a, maybe a, the middle a little bit, but mostly still the bottom. Maybe about a lane higher. He's doing kind of a middle in turn one, turn two even. Yeah, kind of gradually moving up. So it kind of worked for him, I think. He's running middle line right now. And this is lap 20, so we're about halfway through the race, starting uh, right about now. We're one lap away from it. Kind of going back to the bottom now. Okay. So it looks like you can move around, but maybe just don't be so dramatic with it. Maybe you're not going to be running the high line necessarily. But maybe go about a lane up to the middle lane. Maybe you'll get some more grip. Maybe you can help uh, with that right front being worn. You can get uh, a better run out of the corner. It's getting passed by a lap car right now. He's back to the bottom lane. middle bottom kind of switching back and forth probably testing uh, and seeing uh, how much speed he gets out of each lane almost kind of doing a high line uh, some of these laps in turns uh, one and two as well maybe doing uh, testing there appreciate the 12 for uh, unknowingly adding to some research here 
But it uh, looks like mostly bottom lane when he moved up. It was mostly just one lane up. Not necessarily doing the high line, but he was getting pretty far up the track there. Near the end. Like, that's still kind of middle, but he kind of drifts up to the outside a little bit, even. So that's interesting. Alright, so... Some research here of the Oval Refresh. Hopefully that was interesting to anybody that races this, as we learn a little bit. And uh, to finish it off, we'll look at the race results, though unofficial. Race Lab says we would have gained 20 I rating from this race. Strong field of 4108. As you can see here, nothing actually happening, but this is the finishing order. So, thank you for watching. Top 10 and a 36 car field is pretty good to me. And uh, we'll continue to see what the oval free refresh feels like. We'll see uh, how it changes, how uh, different combos feel. But for now, uh, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.